He works alone, his hands defiling the bodies of the dead in his thirst for knowledge and power. His name is Old Craig, a man who was once respected in the field of science until fate led him along another path. Soon, he will complete his work. Tonight, as the sun sets on these exiled lands, he will unleash his demonic brood onto the streets. And should no one stop him, this prison planet will be consumed by a horde of nightmare creatures. This is the 10th video in a series dedicated towards defending against raiders and Conan exiles. So far we've taken a look at explosives, orbs, and arrows as individual raiding tools, but now we will compare, contrast, and combine all three. Of course there is a fourth contender looming in the background, the trebuchet, but that deserves its own video. Before we get started, I'd like to drop a quick shout out to Broken Fang. He's a prolific Conan content creator with original ideas and insights. He also did a community spotlight on my channel, so thanks for your level-headed review. The first noticeable difference amongst these weapons is their deployment. Bombs have an outstanding range of zero, not including splash damage. Orbs can be thrown with explosion on impact using right mouse or with a timed explosion left mouse. But both have the same horizontal range of roughly six and one half squares. And a vertical range of three squares. And arrows have an insane range of about 1,675 squares horizontal and 837 squares vertical. The next difference is their splash damage. While bombs have no range at all, they can damage targets up to 9 squares away in all directions. Fire orbs have a much smaller splash at about 2 to 3 squares. And explosive arrows have the smallest splash at about 1 to 3 squares. Two considerations that may be overlooked is how they behave when used within range of a god bubble and underwater. A bubble will block arrows and orbs from entering it, but bomb damage outside of the bubble will damage targets within. Once inside the bubble, arrows and orbs will continue to be blocked, but bombs can be placed at will. While seemingly useless against bubbles, arrows can actually be used if you're standing close enough to a target when the arrow explodes. As you can see here, my explosive arrow damages this wall and sets it on fire. I can even stack this fire with a poison arrow. Just keep in mind that it will damage you since you're standing so close. When trying a similar approach with orbs, it doesn't work. While underwater, you can't throw orbs or shoot arrows. You can, however, place bombs. Orbs and arrows are still effective if you attack with them outside of the water at a target in the water. A key difference here is that there is no burn damage. Now let's take a look at damage values. The target is a tier 3 black ice wall with 70,000 HP. I'm going to look for two things, efficiency and time. I have a few notes to add before we start. One, fire orbs, explosive arrows, and bombs all cause instant and burn damage. Instant damage occurs on land and underwater, whereas burn damage is negated by the water. Two, burns and other effects last for about 30 seconds. Three, orb stacking is no longer an option. Four, adding grease or oil to an existing grease or oil fire does not extend the burn duration. Five, the following values are all for a single raider, but at the end, I'll use two raiders to see if they can be improved. 6. Firing arrows drains stamina whereas throwing orbs and placing bombs does not. First up, orbs. According to the underwater test, a fire orb inflicts about 1350 instant damage. If left to burn for a full 30 seconds, it causes 2867 damage. I tried various combinations of fire, grease, and gas orbs, and here are the results. I'm measuring efficiency by number of required orbs, and the most efficient method is to use fire orbs and allow for full 30 second burns. This method would only require 25 total orbs. I'm measuring time by the quickest method to destroy the wall. This value is going to vary depending on the actual raid setup, but I'm assuming an orb takes 2.22 seconds from wind up to impact. In this case, the fastest method is continuous fire orbs at 1.92 minutes, followed by a fire plus gas orb at 2.07 minutes, and a fire plus grease plus gas orbs at 2.89 minutes. Next up, arrows. An explosive arrow causes about 67 instant damage. If allowed to burn for the full 30 seconds, it causes 1,579 damage. For the combinations, I used explosive, oil, and poison arrows, and here are the results. 
the most efficient method is to use 44 explosive arrows and let each arrow burn for a full 30 seconds. It could be argued that poison and oil arrows are cheaper than explosive arrows since they don't require dragon powder. If you agree with that, then the most efficient method would be to fire an explosive arrow, wait 30 seconds, add an oil arrow, and wait another 30 seconds. This would require 26 of each or 52 total arrows. Since firing arrows drain stamina, the quickest method is going to depend on other factors, namely stamina. Assuming perfect stamina, it would take 1.04 minutes by firing a poison arrow followed by an explosive arrow. In actuality, it took me about 3 minutes and 35 seconds. And finally, bombs. There is only one flavor of bomb, so this should be straightforward, but it's not. Instant bomb damage is around 9,505 and full burn damage is 10,870. Bomb damage can be difficult to calculate because the environment and surrounding objects can affect the damage in unpredictable ways. For example, I'm going to use two methods of placing bombs. One, stacked tightly, and two, spaced out. When considering the most efficient method, we want a method that is 100% efficient, meaning we get the most bang for our buck out of each bomb. Placing one bomb at a time is a reliable way to max out efficiency. It would take 7 bombs to destroy this wall. Now let's look at placing up to 10 bombs at a time. We can achieve 100% efficiency with 3 and 4 bombs, but that number greatly drops off at around 5 bombs. If we retest but space out the bombs, we can increase the efficiency and we can fully destroy the wall with 9 bombs. Taking all of this into consideration, the most efficient method would be to place 5 bombs spaced out and then follow up with two bombs to finish off the wall. This would require seven total bombs. If you've got tons of resources to waste and you could care less about efficiency, then the quickest method is to drop nine bombs at a time to destroy the wall in a single blast. Here are the results for two players attacking the wall. The method here was just to continuously throw or shoot at the wall until it was destroyed. When it came to orbs, all three combinations took around the same time with the fastest at 1 minute and 11 seconds. When we both used explosive arrows, once we reached the 8 minute mark, I gave up. The wall still had over 30,000 health left. This is because burn damage does not stack, so only the instant damage was having an effect. At only 67 damage per shot, you can see why this was taking forever. Once we started mixing explosive arrows with poison arrows, things went a lot smoother and we destroyed the wall in about 2 minutes and 27 seconds. When it comes to destroying a large chest, the results are pretty straightforward. All three weapons cause max damage. For a single chest, 9 fire orbs can do the trick fairly cheap, but for a cluster of chests, bombs are your best bet. Now let's do our best nuclear boy scout impersonation and combine these effects. What we're looking for here is an improvement over what we've already seen, because if there's no improvement, there's no point in doing it. These two columns show the total cost of the combo. Column 1 is for option 1, and column 2 is for option 2. When it comes to bombs, they will not ignite grease orbs or oil arrows. Adding a gas orb or poison arrow adds over 1000 damage which reduces the cost to destroy a wall by one bomb. When it comes to orbs, adding poison and oil arrows is actually slightly more effective than using gas and grease orbs. This is probably due to 1. Arrows are more accurate and 2. Arrows inflict a small amount of physical damage from impact. And finally, when it comes to arrows, you can increase damage by adding a fire orb to an oil or poison arrow. This would have the advantage of removing the need for an explosive arrow, thereby saving some dragon powder. A final consideration is the resource cost. It may seem like arrows outside of range are inferior to bombs, but that's not quite the case. A single dragon powder produces one bomb, but a single dragon powder also produces 10 explosive arrows. So, while a single arrow only causes 1,579 damage, a stack of 10 of them causes 15,790 damage. Compared to 10,870 damage from a single bomb, the arrows actually cause more. This can save substantial dragon powder. It takes 7 dragon powder to destroy a tier 3 wall with bombs, but it only takes 5 dragon powder with explosive arrows. This number can be further reduced when adding a grease orb. At 27,570 damage with 26 explosive arrows and 26 grease orbs, it only takes 3 dragon powder and 130 tar. 
If Dragon Powder isn't your thing, you can go entirely orb based. A Fire Orb and Grease Orb combo needs 19 of each to destroy a tier 3 wall which amounts to 95 Volatile Glands and 95 Tar. So just keep in mind that when crafting an orb, you only produce one. When crafting arrows, you produce a stack of 10. And when crafting bombs, you just produce one. Okay, that's it for this video. There are more raid videos on the way, plus a duo PvP survival series. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace.